Uh, thank you for coming out. My name is Anupam Singhal. I'm the Director of Product Management for Antibody Therapeutics at Berkeley Lights. Uh, especially thank you for missing the World Cup game to, uh, to join the session. So I'm going to talk today about accessing broad B-cell diversity to rapidly identify high-value rabbit monoclonal antibodies. The B-cell repertoire is vastly diverse, containing a diverse network of antibody molecules that each have a unique sequence and function. These diverse libraries of antibody molecules are ripe with therapeutic candidates. Over the last three decades, we have developed antibody therapy therapies against a variety of diseases, ranging from autoimmune disorders, infectious diseases, and cancer. Despite their success to date, however, traditional antibody discovery technologies are una unable to screen the, diverse, uh, the diversity of the B-cell repertoire. As a result, antibody therapies have only been developed against simple targets with limited to no success against difficult targets like GPCRs and ion channels. The discovery of antibody therapies against these difficult targets, or the high-hanging fruit, will require new technologies that can perform functional screens of the entire B-cell repertoire. Antibody discovery using the traditional hybridoma approach requires immortalization of B-cells uh, by cell fusion, followed by lengthy subcloning expansion and screening. The immortalization step often results in the death of greater than 90% of B-cells, and therefore results in a significant loss of sequence diversity. Single B-cell technologies seek to access greater B-cell diversity by bypassing the cell fusion step. However, many of these approaches provide little to no functional information, which results in significant time, labor, and cost to sequence, clone, and re-express irrelevant hits that either don't have the correct function or, the, or don't bind the correct epitope. Opto-B discovery workflows on the Berkeley Lights Beacon platform maximize diversity of antibodies through rapid functional profiling of the B-cell repertoire from immunized animals. I'm going to start by explaining our Optoplasma B discovery workflows, which automate cell sample handling, screening, cDNA synthesis, and sequence recovery from plasma B cell samples. These workflows begin with the loading of mouse plasma B cell samples onto the beacon, and a 96 well plate is, is inserted into the beacon, and then the beacon automatically loads those cells onto OptoSelect chips. Each OptoSelect chip contains over 20,000 nanopens, each less than one nanoliter in volume. That's roughly 10,000 times smaller than a well in a 96 well plate. B cells are cloned into nanopens using Berkeley Lights' OptoSelect technology in which cells are manipulated by light. As shown here, this light-based manipulation can be selectively performed on cells with markers for viability or other phenotypic properties. Tens of thousands of B cells can be cloned across multiple chips in less than four hours. Nanopens enable rapid, precise, and highly sensitive assays. The small volumes enable secreted antibody concentrations to reach detectable levels in a matter of minutes. In the assay depicted on this slide, secreted antibodies from mouse plasma B cells are diffusing out of the pens, and they're binding to antigen-coated beads, which then sequester a secondary antibody. This results in a fluorescent halo or bloom, which, which kind of is centered on top of these antigen-specific plasma B cells. The assay is performed on tens of thousands of cells simultaneously, and this is just a single field of view that's depicted here in which hundreds of cells are screened to identify dozens of hits. Now these assays can be performed either uh, in, in sequence or in parallel in order to assess antibody specificity and cross-reactivity. This figure depicts three assays that were performed in parallel that enable you to detect antibodies specific to antigen X, cross-reactive to antigens X and Y, and of course, not specific to either antigen. Cell binding assays can also be used to down-select down lead candidates against membrane targets. 
In these assays, the cells replace the beads that are, and the cells are overexpressing the target antigen on the cell membrane. Antigens, uh, antibodies specific to these cell surface antigens are again selected based on these fluorescent halos that are centered on top of the pens containing antigen specific B cells. Now, opto uh, B discovery workflows provide multiple approaches for recovery of the paired heavy light chain sequences of antigen specific antibodies. In the first method, B cells are unloaded into well plates for subsequent cDNA synthesis, cDNA amplification, followed by amplification of the antibody heavy light chain genes and Sanger sequencing. The second method integrates on-chip genomics by performing cell lysis and cDNA synthesis on the chip. Single beads are then unloaded into well plates for cDNA amplification and then following the same process, amplification of the antibody heavy light chain genes and Sanger sequencing. The third and final method integrates optical and genetic barcoding into the cDNA synthesis step in an approach that we call OptiSeq barcoded BCR. In this approach, following cDNA synthesis, the optical barcodes are read out by fluorescence imaging, and the optical barcodes are then stored in software to subsequently link each antibody sequence to its function. The barcoded beads are then automatically recovered in bulk, and over 1,000 hits can be recovered in a 96-well plate. Additional hits can then be recovered in multiple well plates. Using this technology, we demonstrated the recovery of ne nearly 12,000 hits from two optoplasma B discovery workflows that were performed in less than one week using a single plasma B cell sample. Using a combination of fragmentation, NGS sequencing, and bioinformatic analysis, Optici barcoded BCR also enables rapid and accurate sequencing of full-length variable regions of antibodies. The ability to reconstruct these full-length sequences from short reads enables high-throughput sequencing of over 1,000 antibodies from a single luminous sequencing run. In the graph on this slide, we recovered over 500 paired heavy light chain sequences from a single 96-well plate in a single MySeq run. Now, production of the lead molecules for downstream characterization typically in involves costly gene synthesis and then lab laborious bacterial cloning. OptoBCR rapid re-expression enables rapid production of these molecules in just one week to confirm function in plate-based assays. The amplified cDNA is directly cloned into expression constructs, which enables expression of over 1,000 antibodies for rapid functional confirmation. In this graph, over 80% 80, 80 of over 250 re-expressed antibodies exhibited the antigen specificity that we expected based on the on-chip assays. We conducted a head-to-head -head study between a hybridoma workflow and, a, and an optoplasma B discovery workflow against a membrane antigen called TIM3. The, the hybridoma workflow followed a conventional approach of B cell immortalization by cell fusion whereas the optoplasma B discovery workflow directly screened the plasma B cells from the same immunized mice. Only eight of the 67 antibodies that were discovered using the hybridoma workflow contained unique heavy chain CDR3 sequences compared with over 50% of over 500 antibodies discovered on the optoplasma B discovery workflows. The V gene families that were identified spanned a, a wide range, including all families from which antibodies were, were discovered using the hybridoma process. So in sum, the optoplasmy discovery workflows yielded a larger, more sequence diverse panel of antibodies as compared with hybridoma. Just looking at the numbers, uh, the optoplasmy discovery workflows discover nearly eight times as many hits against the soluble TIM3 antigen, nearly nine times as many hits against the cell membrane antigen, and nearly six times as many hits that cross-reacted with both antigens. Our customers have demonstrated how optoplasma B discovery workflows can uh, successfully yield hits against difficult membrane antigens like GPCRs. And the slide here depicts data that was uh, collected from the team at Genevac who successfully discovered antibodies against three transmembrane targets that each exemplify the common problems with difficult targets. 
One problem is small extracellular regions, which reduces the number of possible sites to target. A second is high sequence homology, which reduces the chances of, of eliciting an immune response, and by extension, reducing the, the frequency of antigen-specific B cells. And thirdly, poor cell surface expression, which makes cell-based screening difficult. Across all three targets, they found approximately 10 times as many hits as compared with, tra with traditional hybridoma. I'm gonna spend the rest of the presentation introducing our newest opto memory B discovery rabbit workflow, which again, enables rapid discovery of functionally characterized antibodies from rabbit memory B cells. The workflow enables a robust activation of rabbit memory B cells using feeder-free activation media. It enables function-forward screening of activated B cells to identify antibodies of interest, and it enables efficient recovery of antibody genes for downstream sequencing and re-expression, and that all takes place in less than a week. And from the perspective of antibody discovery, rabbits are interesting because they produce antibodies with high affinity and high specificity. Rabbits can create antibodies against targets that are difficult in mice and can also produce antibodies against mouse targets, which are often needed for preclinical research. Rabbit antibodies are commonly used as research reagents, as diagnostics, and as therapeutic candidates. Now the discovery of antibodies from plasma B cells in rabbits is a major challenge because these cells cannot be as easily isolated as they can be in mice. In contrast, rabbit memory B cells are easier to obtain as they're present in rabbit blood and therefore don't require sacrificing of the animals. Because memory B cells are also more uh, robust to, to survive freeze-thaw cycles than plasma B cells, they're easier to source and handle as well. One major challenge, however, with memory B cells is that they don't secrete antibodies, which makes it difficult to screen antibodies they produce. The subsequent slides are gonna demonstrate some of the way rabbit monoclonal antibodies are discovered today. So while hybridoma is the workhorse method for mouse antibodies, this workflow requires cancer cell lines to immortalize the antibody secreting cells. These cancer cell lines are widely available for mice, but not so widely available for, for rabbits. And similar to mouse workflows, the rabbit hybridoma methods suffer from low fusion efficiency, which again limits the B cell diversity. Now another approach to discovering rabbit antibodies is by single cell sorting of memory B cells followed by activation in plates. The secreted antibodies in the supernatant can then be assayed to discover antibodies of interest. Throughput is a major disadvantage of this approach, and discovery of antibodies against difficult targets may necessitate sorting of over 100 plates, thus again requiring significant time and expensive lab automation. Finally, antibodies can be discovered in rabbits using sorting of antigen-specific memory B cells directly into PCR plates for amplification and sequencing of the antibody genes. Again, this approach is not amenable to difficult targets, such as cell targets that cannot be expressed as soluble proteins. The lack of upfront functional screening also necessitates sequencing and re-expression of a large number of hits to find the molecules of interest. Now, the Opto Memory B discovery workflow is supported by kits and protocols, starting from isolation of the memory B cells, activation, all the way to Sanger sequencing of the antibodies of interest. The memory B cell activation takes place over four days using BLI's um, Opto sample B, B prep B, sorry, Opto Memory B sample prep kit. The single cell isolation and screening is then performed in less than one day. And finally, antibody genes are recovered for sequencing and re-expression. The workflow enables screening of over 15,000 to over 60,000 single cells per workflow, depending on which chips are used and the number of chips per workflow. Similar to mouse workflows then, uh, the, after loading, these activated rabbit B cells can be screened using on-chip assays for antibody specificity and cross-reactivity. And the videos here are depicting secretion assays from activated B cells 
using a model-soluble antigen, again, TIM3. In green is an assay for IgG secretion, while in purple is an assay for antigen specificity against TIM3. The bead-based assays for IgG secretion can be used to, to assess successful activation of the memory B cells. From dozens of workflows performed on samples from unimmunized rabbits, as well as rabbits that have been immunized with either KLH or TIM3, the majority of the cells that are activated secrete IgG antibodies. Now this high activation rate enables the discovery of hundreds to thousands of antigen specific, specific antibodies as, as demonstrated on the right uh, from rabbits immunized with the KLH antigen. The vast majority of these activa activated B cells also continue to secrete antibodies after four hours of assays, as measured again using these bead-based assays for IgG secretion. Now, the lengthy time that these cells are still secreting enables multiple assays to be performed in order to functionally profile which ones are the, are the true lead candidates. Now finally, the opto memory B discovery rabbit workflow enables efficient recovery of antigen-specific antibody sequences for downstream expression and confirmation assays. The overall sequence recovery from both cell and, and these opto seq BCR unload methods was about 60%, and nearly 90% of the re-expressed antibodies yielded the expected antigen specificity. Now, early testing of this workflow from Berkeley Lights' customers has yielded rapid discovery of antibodies against therapeutically relevant targets. The data presented on this slide, produced by the Genovac team, demonstrates how the opto memory B rabbit workflow significantly expands access to antigen-specific antibody diversity. I encourage you to attend Yannick's talk uh, later this afternoon, I think in approximately an hour, to learn more about this work. In summary, uh, BLI's new opto memory B discovery rabbit workflow enables rapid discovery of functionally characterized antibodies from rabbit memory B cells. As I showed, the workflow enables robust activation of rabbit memory B cells using feeder-free activation media. It enables function forward screening of activated B cells to identify antibodies of interest. It, uh, and, that, and then finally, it requires uh, it enables efficient recovery of antibody sequences for downstream sequencing and re-expression. And that all takes place in one week. Berkeley Lights has a large and growing list of customers using the technology for antibody discovery, cell line development, and other applications. And by enabling functional screening of broad B cell diversity from the B cell repertoire, opto B discovery will enable the, will enable people to reach the high-hanging fruit by enabling discovery of antibodies against difficult targets. Thanks again for attending the talk, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Just a, a reminder that we have a microphone um, that's also going to be passed around for, um, for the folks that are online. Uh, very interesting talk. So I know you have uh, rapid re-expression kits for mouse uh, uh, antibodies, but do you have uh, any similar reagents for the downstream work in for rabbits uh, for re-expression, uh, what type of plasmids and, and all that? Uh, right, right. We don't currently have a, a re-expression kit for rabbits. Um, the backbone that's created uh, for this rapid re-expression kit currently puts a mouse IgG2 on the back end. Um, but there's no reason that you couldn't you know, design yeah. that, that construct to make so a rabbit So it's like antibody. rabbit mouse chimera. Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. I think we had a, a question here as well. Thank you for your talk. So I'm wondering, do you use antigen to enrich the memory B cell first or just uh, capturing all the memory B cell? Right. Um, so we don't currently use antigen to enrich uh, for the memory B cells. That allows you to, to um, the ability to actually uh, screen against more difficult antigens. So in the case where you can't actually solubly express the antigen, you can still use the workflow. That being said, there's no reason that you couldn't also perform an antigen positive sort and okay. then perform the workflow, yeah. Yeah, another question is uh, what kind of reagent or method do you active the 
memory B cell, let them differentiate into plasma cell. So is that? Yeah, it's um, it's using a uh, a proprietary media that contains uh, a cocktail of cytokines that activate the cells. Uh, the site, the cocktail. You, I'm not sure what what um, ingredient in that. Cocktail. No, no, it's fully chemically defined. Okay, yeah. great. And that was optimized at BLI. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk. I have a quick question about your rabbit memory B cell sequencing using the barcode technology. So I wonder for your, I know that you get pretty good sequencing recovery for mouse and human. For your rabbit sequencing recovery using your novel uh, barcoded technology, what's the typical recovery rate from those antigen specific B cells? Yeah, yeah. So the recovery rate is uh, on average about 60%, and there's obviously a spread from workflow to workflow. Um, presently, our customers are mainly doing uh, the sequencing either using the cell unload method or the non-barcoded bead unload method for, for the rabbit workflow, um, whereas the barcoded method is, is usually used for, for the mouse workflow. So for the unloaded method, the traditional way, like what would be the recovery rate for the memory B cell from rabbit? Yeah, um, it was on the, uh, on the previous slide here. Let me just pull that up. So you can see here that for the, the all, all unloads is, is the combination of the two uh, bars here. So for the bead unload methods, uh, it's about 52% on average. Um, for the cell unloads, about 65% on average. The bead unloads um, enable you to, to automate some of the, uh, the downstream genomics, as well as because you're no longer now susceptible to the, life, the lifespan of the cell, you can also export more cells. You can, you know, export 192 and then export another 192, whereas you're kind of limited on the, the lifespan of the cells with the cell unload method. Um, the question was whether we have any similar kits for enrichment of memory B cells from rabbits. Um, so we do have recommendations, and, we, and our sample prep kit actually has um, an antibody to enrich for memory B cells from rabbits. Yes. Any other questions? Hello. Just one, I probably mentioned this. I just curious why, what's the advantage of using memory B cell rabbit or to just start with plasma cells? Was there any, any yeah. reason why try memory B cell instead of plasma cells? Yeah, rabbit? absolutely. I mean, there is no specific advantage necessarily of a memory B cell over a plasma cell. Um, the, the reason that we're using memory B cells is they're easier to access. So in the case of mouse, there's very well-known markers to enrich for plasma cells, right? CD138 is a very common enrichment marker. For plasma cells in rabbits, there, there isn't as uh, well-defined markers. And so you end up with these heterogeneous populations and uh, kind of inconsistent results from workflow to workflow, whereas memory B cells are widely available in, in the blood, and you know that you're going to get that same result every time. So, so, so I guess a continue question. So this means you, when you get it from a PBMC, start with a PBMC, so you don't do any enrichment or segregation between plasma and memory B cell, just using whole PBMC as starting material? That's right. So That's this right. means your starting material contain both, I assume, that is memory correct. B plasma cells. That is correct, yes. I see, okay, all right, thank we you. We do, the activation process, as I mentioned, is a four day long process. So I would imagine that the plasma cells that um, that have been harvested in that blood sample have likely not survived um, for that long. But theoretically, they could be also activated by, by the cocktail. Um, if you're doing a uh, mouse uh, chimera for re-expression, are you able to access the rabbit C-kappa-1 with the extra disulfide in it? It's a great question that I don't know the answer to. Yeah, um, but I can... Uh, I can follow up with you afterwards if you, if you provide me your business card.
Great. Any other any other questions? If not, uh, thanks again for coming to the talk. Thank you.